All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Focused Investor. I'm Rich Betke, uh, co-founder of Real Wealth. I'm super excited that you're here. Looking forward to delivering this today for the 17th year in a row. Kind of crazy when I look back on it. You know, we've had Real Wealth as a company since 2003. So we're coming up on our 20 year anniversary uh, and did this a few years after we started and started with, I think there was three people in the room when I did this live. So great to see the hundreds of people here today. Uh, really glad you're here. So let's dive right into it. Focused Investor Part 1, because Part 2 is when we look at the year ahead, creating year 2023. Wow. <laughs> so here we go. All right. I'm going to start with a disclaimer, as we always do at Real Wealth, but this one's a little bit different than normal. Uh, the strategies mentioned in this presentation may not be appropriate for everyone. These strategies are only appropriate if you have a strong desire to grow, improve, and be a more focused investor. Your past performance is no guarantee of future results. While every effort is made to design and create a life of abundance and happiness, the possibility of challenges, mess ups, and failures always exists, right? So, however, I believe that you don't want to settle for a lame, boring life. You want to kick ass and get the most out of life, and that's why you're here. So let's do this. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, it's just making the time to do this. And it's so important for creating that wealth. You know, uh, Kathy and I live in Malibu, California. There's a lot of money here, a lot of rich people. But as this says, some people are so poor, all they have is money. So we don't want to be that. You know, there's people in Malibu who are stoked and happy and getting the most out of life. And there's people who have a lot of money. And they're kind of look a little grumpy and a little bitchy. So it's like, let's not be that. Let's really get the most out of this, which is real wealth to us, right? It's having the money and the freedom to live life on your own terms. So what is real wealth for you? I want you to just think about that for a moment. As we move into this, this is going to be all about you today. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. I hope that you have a piece of paper or something to write with, because you're going to walk away from today with uh, hopefully one page of all the highlights of your 2022, the lessons learned, the next steps, uh, your assessment of your life, um, so many things, so many things to move forward with. So think about that. What is real wealth for you? If you had the money and the freedom to live life on your terms, to, to do what you want with the people you wanna be with, and whenever you wanna do it, what would that look like for you? So just bring that to mind is we're going to bring that into today. So what is real wealth for you? All right, I know what it's like for me, man. It's good stuff. I'm looking forward to more of it. So it's a lot of it's about mindset. You know, this thing about mindset, it's so important. I have been a coach for, man, it's been 27 years now, 1995. I was certified as a business and personal coach. I've coached thousands of clients ever since. And this is what I've noticed, that an open mind collects more riches than an open purse. All of the members at Real Wealth, 67,000 members now, the members at Real Wealth, the ones that we've seen truly create real wealth and get to the next level and really design that life uh, and have the money that they want. These are the people who have an open mind, who are more focused investors, who are creative, they're growing, they get better every year. So that's what this is all about. And that's what we're gonna do today. Because we don't want this to be us, right? You want to get your head out of your pants and uh, look around and make sure that uh, you're not you know, stuffed off and not looking at what's going on around you. We want to wake up, be aware. So today I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. This is about educating. I'm not going to really be teaching you today. I'm going to be educating, which comes from the word to adduce, to draw out. So I'm hoping to draw out the answers from you. I see you as the expert in your life, in your business, in your investing, in your portfolio. You're the expert there. So my job as your coach today is to coach you through this next hour or less uh, to help draw out the answers from you. So here's my goal for today as we move into 2023 and we wrap up the year is to help you gain clarity, awareness, and to help you learn from the past year of your life so you can experience even more fulfillment and real wealth in 2023 and beyond. So like I said, I've done this for the last 17 years. I've taken uh, hundreds of my coaching clients through the same process, go through the same thing with our family. Kathy and I sit down with our daughters every year and we do this year end completion. And we also set our year intentions, which we'll talk about that's coming later in the next webinar. So that's my goal for you today. 
And here's the problem. And here's why it's so important because life is busy, right? We get so overwhelmed. There's so much coming at us and it's, it's so hard to slow down and take stock and look at, look at our lives. So we often put off what really matters. We don't stop to be like, what's working in my life? What's not working? Where can I grow? How can I learn? How can I get better? And we don't realize what really matters until it's too late. When I was diagnosed with six months to live, that was 20 years ago now. That's, that was the formation of real wealth because Kathy had to rally to get out and find a way to make ends meet if I died. When I was diagnosed with that false positive, which the cancer had not spread, as you probably know, to my liver. But when I was diagnosed with that, one thing I said to Kathy was, I'm so glad that I had a coach over these last several years because that coach helped really help me look at my life and what really mattered most and what I was spending my time on and what I was investing my time into. And I was like, you know, if I only have six months to live, I know that I've lived a good life. I know that I've given you the attention and our kids the attention and I, I lived the life I wanted to live. So, but so often we put that off. If we're not asked those powerful questions to really take a look at our life and our year and all that, um, we just, we don't get better and we don't make changes. So I'm hoping that you have someone in your life who draws these questions out of you. We'll talk about that later, but for now, that person's me. So I'm gonna ask you some questions today to help look at that. And because what you focus on becomes your reality, right? Thank you, Yoda. Uh, so what we focus on becomes our reality. So let's keep that in mind and we're gonna focus on what really matters to us so we can bring more of that reality into our lives. So let's just look at why to do this. Why do a year-end completion? Why have I been doing this for Real Wealth for the last 17 years? Why do we do it with our family every year? Why do I do it with my coach? Because it allows us to slow down, to pause and reflect, right? Take a deep breath on that one. Right, we just get here, we slow down. And we also learn how to be happier. I'm gonna go into that in a little while, but it's about reflecting. We have this built-in negativity bias as human beings, and we've had it for the last 50,000 years as we evolved and advanced. Um, because we're always looking in the past, You know, so many years ago, we would look for what was gonna kill us or hurt us or steal from us. Uh, and so we don't really have those fears today. We do have fears, of course, but not anything like it was a thousand years ago, right? But we still evolved with this negativity bias where our brain looks for problems. And so we get so caught into looking at the problem and what's wrong, so often we don't look at what's right and what's good and what we're happy about. So we're gonna learn how to be happier just through this process. And also through this process, the year-end completion, we also learn to become better. We become better because we grow. Uh, we learn what, from our mistakes, we learn from our successes and wins, and we take that time to pause and reflect when we look back and say, what do I really want and how do I wanna grow? And bottom line, this is it. When we get better, everything around us gets better, right? If you think about your life, when you got better in one area, didn't affect somewhere else? When you got in better shape, didn't everything else start to work better? When you uh, were educating yourself, when you're learning about real estate investing, you know, in the fir at first it seemed so overwhelming and so many terms and everything, but over time you start to be like, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting this. And you get better, you're learning, you're growing, and then life starts to get better. You start to create real wealth. You start to put that portfolio together that's gonna bring you the cash flow that you want. So let's dive right into this. This is the process. So in the next webinar on January 5th, uh, I'll remind you of that later, um, we're gonna go more into the strategizing, implementing, and today we're in the, and we're gonna go into envisioning too. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of envisioning later in January. Uh, but for now, we're in this orange arrow, observing. So we're looking back. So hopefully you did the Focus Investor um, one of these years, maybe this is your 17th year, which would be awesome. You're gonna see here some of the lot, same questions, but it's the same questions I ask myself and my family, same questions that we look at at Real Wealth as a team, looking at what's working, how do we grow, what did we learn over this last year? That's the observing part. When you're looking at observing and looking back and that's where you get the learning and the growth. So when it is time to go to Envision, talk about goals for the next year, what you wanna create and looking into the future, then you can have more clarity around that. And we're gonna do some of that today. And then you can move in and create a strategy 
and then implement that strategy and keep going through this. And as a coach, this is what I've done with my clients. I'm constantly helping them envision, come up with a strategy and a game plan, implementing that, taking action, holding them accountable, and then moving into observing how did that last week go? How did this quarter go? How did the year go? So today we're looking at, at the year 2022. I said this can help us be happier. I talked about that, you know, the negativity bias. So how it makes us happier when we look at our successes and wins, which we're going to do in a moment. So get ready to write. Uh, we get a release of a dopamine. Dopamine, that neurotransmitter that just makes us feel good. It makes us feel happier. And so constantly doing this and training your brain through neuroplasticity. The more we do the same thing over and over, whether it's negative or positive, we lay down myelin between our neurons and our brain, and it, it strengthens that channel from neuron to neuron. So it actually, that's how we form habits. That's how we create rituals. That's how we, it becomes automatic, right? Neuroplasticity. So when we do the same thing with looking at what's working from growing and working on ourselves and really giving some deep thought, we're actually changing our brain for the better because you're actually doing things that you're really looking at the positivity of it, the growth, the learning, and you're doing that on a regular basis, you're gonna change your brain and you're gonna be happier more often. So let's look back. Let's look back on 2022. And here's the first question I'm gonna ask you. So please write down your answer. What was the best thing that happened in your life this past year? In the year 2022, what really stands out? What comes to mind first for you? What was the big win? What was the best thing that happened in your life in 2022? Go ahead and write that down. And as you think about that, you write it down, really take it in. Really take in the, grateful for, the gratefulness for that. It's like, wow. That was awesome. <laughs> really let it sink in, get that little dopamine release. Okay, and again, like I said earlier, I want you to walk away from today with this one pager, a one pager of your life in the year 2022, what you learned, what you accomplished, what you did, all the stuff, how you progressed. And then uh, for the next webinar in January, we're gonna be looking at your year ahead. But having this, it, it allows you to bookend your year so you can go back. I have a whole binder here. I call it my master plan. It's a three ring binder. And I have all these in that. I've scanned them into my computer as well. But I can flip back and say, what was going on in my life in the year 2012? And I have it all listed down. So you're gonna have the same thing today. So you got that down. What was the best thing that happened in your life in 2022? So that's the big highlight. That's first thing top of mind, right? What else? What else happened in 2022 for which you are most grateful? Go ahead and write some bullets down there. What else happened this past year? And think about different areas of your life. Was there something relationship-wise that really was great that happened over this past year? Kathy and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this past year. So that was a big one for me. Yeah, hopefully it was a big one for her. <laughs> All right, so get that down. What happened in 2022 for which you are most grateful? What are those big successes and wins? And hopefully you have a few written down there. And you can come back to this later. Of course, we're recording this webinar, so you can watch the replay later. If you want to go through it with your family or friends, you could do that. Or if you just want to go through it yourself and continue on with some of these. Um, but you might want to write that down too. What, what else happened in my life in 2022? Uh, so you know what this means. You come back to it. You can add to it. And put as much as you want there. The more, the better. Okay. So hopefully you got some things down. I know we're moving quick here, but we're going to get all through this whole thing. You can always go back and, you know, flesh it out a little bit more. So looking back again at this past year, how did you improve, especially in your wealth, the area of your wealth? How did you, in, how did you improve your wealth? You know, at Real Wealth, we're all about that. That's our purpose, helping people create real wealth. And so that means having the money and the freedom to live life on your terms, right? So the money is a big part. So this is uh, improving your wealth financially and all in holistically your whole life. And what about your financial freedom? Did you move ahead there? Did you step forward? Did you create more financial freedom? And I wanna go through just kind of the basic four phases of financial freedom, just to clarify this, 
this term, you hear it a lot, but the basics of financial freedom are so often when it's finances, you come in and you're cash flow negative. You're younger often, you're starting off, you're in a new job, your expenses are outweighing your income, so you're cash flow negative. You're spending more than you're making, and you're like, how am I gonna make ends meet? You are maybe putting stuff on a credit card or something, so hopefully not too many of you are in that cash flow negative phase. Then you move into cash flow neutral. Here's where you start kind of keeping an eye on your spending. You start to have a spending plan. You start to look at your finances and you start making more money. And so that way you actually have more, um, more money coming in so you can actually keep that neutral. So you're just, you're making the same amount as you're spending. And then you move into phase three, you go into cash flow positive. So here's where you are making more than you're spending, really simple. And then hopefully that, when you're moving that and you have, you're making more than you're spending, you have money left over to invest. You get into the saving to invest mindset. You get, some people get obsessed with it. I've talked to a bunch of real wealth members who are just obsessed with it and they have to kind of talk themselves out of it sometimes where all this money, it's like, you got to remember to live today, right? But you also want to be putting that money into something where you're going to invest it. And then when you invest it, you put that money into something, you know, we love real estate at Real Wealth, but it doesn't matter if it's stocks or an index fund or gold or whatever it might be for you or putting it into a business to grow it. Then you get to a place of financial freedom where that money that you've invested is bringing in so much monthly cash flow that you are in financial freedom. You don't have to work. You can live life on your own terms. So uh, your job optional, as we like to say it. Uh, Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach says, I never want to retire. I only want to retire from the things I don't like doing. I, I love that. So let's get to financial freedom. That's the goal. And that's what we're about at Real Wealth. So looking back on this last year, now let's look into the people who really showed up in your life, the people who helped you. So just take a moment for it. just close your eyes and think about who really helped you who really gave to this you this year who supported you this year who comes to mind is it one person one main person that really was a game changer for you who's that person that really made a difference and maybe it's more than one if it's more than one please write that write them down who are the people that supported you that coached you, that mentored you, that supported you? And then a very important question here, what can you do to thank them? What can you do to thank them? So often people help and mentor and support us and, and we're grateful for it. And sometimes we keep that gratefulness in, in our own minds, right? So I'm asking you, what can you do to thank that person? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna call them? and be authentic and just transparent and just really a heartfelt thank you? Are you gonna send them a note? Are you gonna send them a gift? Are you gonna do something? What is it that you're gonna do to really thank that person and let them know that they made a big impact on your life in 2022? Okay, so hopefully you have a name down for that person or you have a few names for those people uh, and you know what you're gonna do to thank them. So please don't skip this, put a little box there that you have to check off later. Uh, but please go ahead and do that. Now let's look at rituals and habits. We know they're so important, right? Those little things that add up to make a big difference. So what helpful rituals did you put in place or what habits did you put in place? Maybe it's even one in 2022. What was it for you? If you did the Focus Investor last January at the beginning of the year, I asked you, what rituals are you going to put in place? What's important for you? What ritual or habit are you gonna put in place? If you were at that and you attended that webinar, what did you do and how did it go? Did you stick to it? Did you forget it at the end of January? Yeah, so what was it for you? What was a helpful ritual or habit that you put in place this past year? And one for me that stands out was I, I made a commitment to make it a full year of meditation and I'm on day 400 and something now. So it was before the, I was doing my year completion, I was looking at the same type of question, and I just heard so many good things about meditation and what it can do for us uh, physically, emotionally, uh, and it's been unbelievable. So now I'm on four, 400 plus day streak. I use the Calm app, it's really simple. It's like 10 to 15 minutes every morning. 
And it's been a huge change for me as far as being present, being more aware, being more grounded, um, just really, really awesome. So, but this is about you. So what about you? What was the ritual that you put in place? Please write that down or maybe it's two or three. Awesome, hopefully you got that. Let's keep moving. And what habits did you shed this past year? What habits did you change? Was there something that you were doing? And I asked you this at the beginning of the year. What is one habit that you are going to let go of and stop doing? We're going to take a look at that today too. But what is it that you stopped doing? What's a habit that you, you broke or you changed or replaced with something good for you? Something that would improve your health or your wealth or your happiness? Okay, I hope you have something. I hope you have more than one thing. But what was that habit that you shed this last year? Please write it down. Again, we're looking at reflection. We're looking at learning. We're looking at growth. So what habit did you shed this past year? And look, let's look at the power of habits. You know, it's, again, I've been so into this for so long. You know, I got my first personal development book back in 1989 and got obsessed with personal growth and development and business growth and being more focused. And the thing that came up more often than anything was the power of habits. And because here, here's the bottom line, your wealth is a direct reflection of your daily habits. Your body weight is a reflection of your daily habits. And your mood, whether you believe it or not, your mood is a reflection of your daily habits. You can have a huge impact on your moods with the right habits, whether it be sleep or exercise or how you eat, uh, being grateful each day, whatever it might be. It all comes down to that. What you pay attention to becomes your life. So that's it. It's just the bold, honest truth right there. So, so for the habit that you shed, nice work on that. And for the habit that you put in place that was a healthy one that was going to improve your health, wealth, and happiness, or, or all of those together, uh, nice work on that. Awesome. Okay, continuing with the learning about you, looking back, what was the theme of your year? What was the theme of your 2022? So one way to look at this is if they were to write a book about your life or make a movie about your life in the year 2022, what would the title be? It's one way to look at it. What was that theme? This allows you to take this whole year, 365 days almost now, or not at the end of the year, but you're looking at this whole year of 2022. And if you boil down the whole general theme of what happened this year, you know, we know what 2020 was about, right? And then 2021 kind of coming out of that. But what about for you? What was, the, what was the theme of your 2022? What really stands out? So when you look back at this, like I said, you're going to have this one pager and you look back at 2022 and you're looking back at this in 2032 and you're going, oh, yeah, I remember 2022. That was the my theme was this. So get that down, please. Whatever it was for you. Okay, you got your theme for the year. You know, I've heard different things from, you know, rising from the ashes or the phoenix or the breakthrough or um, the theme was humility, <laughs> getting humbled could be it. The theme might be uh, financial freedom. Maybe that was it. Maybe this was the year that you finally got to that place of true financial freedom. Maybe that was it. So hopefully you got something down there. If not, you can come back and ponder that later. You know, and we're always going to deal with changes, <laughs> challenges like this little guy. <laughs> oh, man. So we are going to deal with failure. Sometimes you just don't have an excuse. But, you know, oftentimes we do when we take responsibility and we look at what what do we learn from the challenges and the lessons. So now we're going to move from the not so positive and optimistic part. But let's take a look because we have to look at these challenges. Uh, this little boy has learned not to jump over. Uh, fences with a, with wires on top. <laughs> and Niels Bohr, who is the, had the Nobel Prize in Physics back in 1922, I love this quote. He says, an expert is someone who has made all the mistakes which can be made in a narrow field. So man, Kathy and I have learned a lot. We've become experts in real estate investing because we've made a lot of mistakes in the past and it's it's really helped us today. And the reason it's helped us is because we looked at those mistakes and we learned from them uh, or we did not learn from them and we made the same mistake again and then we finally learned. Sometimes, you know, the universe will keep doing that and you make the same mistake and then you're finally like, okay, I got it. So 
Let's take a look at that for you. So what were your biggest challenges in 2022? What were your biggest challenges or mistakes? What's something that maybe you're holding on to? Or you're like, you're upset with yourself or like, I can't believe I did that. Or, or even if it's another person, you're, you're really pissed at another person. And it's like looking at that. And then obviously, you know, of course, I'm going to say it. What responsibility can you take in the whole situation? There's always a place where we can take personal responsibility for a mistake. You can look at someone else and blame them. It gets you nowhere looking at what could have you done differently. What did you learn from it? That's what's going to help you be better. Okay, so let me give you a chance to do that. What were your biggest challenges in 2022? Please write those down if you haven't already started. Your biggest challenges. And it could be anything. It could be with your investing. It could be with your savings. It could be with it, uh, tracking your finances. It could be waiting too late into the year to do your tax planning. It could be a mistake with a relationship, the way you showed up and you're like, man, that was a big challenge, you know? So when you look back, we do this. What did you learn from those challenges? What did you learn? And what can you do differently in the coming year and into the future? So what was the lesson? Maybe look at the challenge that you wrote down and then right next to it or right below it, what did you learn from it? What would you do different? What could you do differently next time? Take that lesson into the future, lock it in, capture it on paper or on your computer, whatever works for you. Okay, so you have a couple challenges written down, maybe one big one, you have the lesson written down or the lessons and you also hopefully looked at where you could take responsibility extreme ownership right jocko <laughs> yeah yep, it's it's just so so important okay continuing to look back at this year what's the personal quality your personal quality that you most developed over the past 12 months so i've got some examples there at the beginning of the year i asked you what is the one personal quality that you're going to focus on this year? What are you most going to develop? So it could be courage. And the way we develop that is we do things that you take a risk a day. You start to get out of your comfort zone. You list things that you could do that would build your courage. And then you build more courage. Maybe it's authenticity, just showing up, being more authentically you. I love that. I just love that. I, my daughter, Krista, did an amazing post on Instagram about just like, no more filters. I'm just going to show me. This is the raw me. And I just, oh my God, I was so inspired by it. Uh, it was just awesome. So authenticity, integrity. One year I made a commitment to live with 100% integrity. It was one of the most challenging challenges I've ever had. I mean, in everything. Uh, so it's like telling the truth and being, you know, this is years ago, uh, but it changed me for the better. So I'll, you can see all the examples there, but what about you? What's the personal quality that you most developed this past year? And write it down. How did you grow as a human being? Okay, hopefully you got something good there. I assume you do. Okay, now let's look at where are you now? So again, we looked at this coaching process, moving from the envisioning into the strategizing, into the implementation, into observing. So we're continuing to observe. So let's observe where you are right now today. And I often bring this, I've always brought this into the, the creating your year uh, focus investor part, which is part two what, that we'll do in January. Um, but I was giving this some thought and I was looking back on it. And I'm like, you know, I think it's important to take a snapshot of our life right now. And then this allows us, our minds to kind of work on it over the holidays before we go into the beginning of January. And you get to think about these different areas of your life and think about how you want them to be. Now, let me let you know this ahead of time. Um, if you go, and you, if you can do it now, if you go to fetkey.com forward slash extreme dash success, you can download this life wheel if you want. Um, it's right there. It's a PDF. If you want to do that and download it and print it, go ahead. Um, or you could do that later. Or if you want to go to realwealth.com forward slash grow, that is the uh, kind of a landing page for my new book, which I'll tell you about in a second. 
but it's um it's got a life balance wheel like an interactive computer based one where you can just put your scores in but or you could just take your piece of paper draw a circle make it look like a pizza here you got your 10 different areas and these are the 10 major areas of life on the way i see it you know these are pretty much in the way my clients have, have told me and shared with me over the years these are the 10 major areas of life and so what I wanna do right now with you is have you take a snapshot of where you are, how satisfied you are. I don't care what anyone else thinks or, or says the way it should be. How satisfied are you in these different areas of life? So go ahead, if you if you haven't printed that out or you haven't gone to realwealth.com forward slash grow or, or you just wanna just write it down. Okay, we're gonna go around this. I'm gonna ask you right now, let's, get, let's do this live. So what you would do is like, say it's career. You think about how satisfied am I with career? So I'm just gonna put some examples on. These are not my my ratings, um, uh, but I just made some examples here. So you would put a seven in there if you're a seven. If you were a one, you put that. If you're super satisfied, it couldn't get any better, it would be a 10, all right? Uh, so down there, the, you know, just zero sucks, couldn't get any worse. 10 just couldn't get any better. That's total success, that's real wealth. Uh, so you just go around and you give a rating to each of these areas. Your finances, how satisfied are you? Your physical environment, your possessions, that would be like your home, your car, the orderliness of things. You might love your house, but it might be a mess. And you're like, you know, that's going to knock physical environment and possessions down a little bit on my rating, um, whatever it might be. So how would you rate? How satisfied are you with the physical things where you live uh, and the physical things in your life? Give that a rating. Health and fitness, how satisfied are you there? How satisfied are you right now, today, with your health and fitness? Give it a rating between zero and 10. Moving into fun and recreation and self-care, are you taking good care of yourself? Are you having fun? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you have the, the time and the freedom to be able to, to get out and play and do stuff? So what's your rating there? How happy and satisfied are you with fun and recreation? Personal development and education, it's gotta be up a notch just because you're here, because you're doing it, you're growing, you're learning, educating yourself. I would think if you're a Real Wealth member with everything we have in our resource center, I'm sure you've been learning a lot with all our webinars. So, uh, but anything, anyhow, it's what this means to you. How satisfied are you there? How satisfied are you with your friends and your community? How satisfied are you there? Your family. How satisfied are you with your family, your immediate family? It could be your extended family, whatever family means to you. How satisfied? If 10 would be like, wow, man, it just couldn't get any better. What would you rate it? Significant other and romance. Now, this is an important one to clarify. You might not be in a relationship and you might rate this a nine because you're totally happy with that. You're totally satisfied. You might be in a relationship and you might rate this a two <laughs> or you might be in a relationship and you rate this a 10. So what about you for significant other and romance? How satisfied are you with this area of your life? Write that number down. And finally, spiritual, whatever that means to you, your connection with God, your um, your religion, your connection with others in the world, whatever spiritual means to you when you feel truly connected and when you feel tr really feel that spirit, how satisfied are you with that? And have you been, you know, right now and over this past year, but right now is what matters most. So then when you're done, you got all your ratings, you got this snapshot of your life, then just draw lines now sorry i'm not a computer whiz so i can't do curved lines but do curved lines right there and on these different sections corresponding to the number so like the five under finances you can see that line is right between zero and ten so go around your life wheel and mark off these areas and get it all complete so you have a new outer edge of your wheel and there's your life right now that's how satisfied you are this is your life wheel. And I like to look, step back and look at this and go, okay, if this were an actual wheel, how bumpy would the ride be? You know, this one's not too bad. I've seen some really crazy ones, some, some tens and some zeros and all that. It'd be a very bumpy ride. But you know, as we talked about, real wealth is holistic. It's about being wealthy and having freedom in all these areas of your life. 
So if the if you got a bumpy wheel, it's not total real wealth. And we'll talk about that more in our real wealth assessment. So nice work on that. You've got your life wheel. You've got a snapshot of where you are. It's a really cool tool that you can use later to step back and say, okay, well, if I was a five here, what would a seven look like? You know, you don't have to take these big leaps. You know, maybe you're a two in an area. You could say, what would a five look like? So you don't have to go way out and say, what would it, you know, total amazingness be like, but you can just step back and say, well, how can I make this a little bit better this year? And that's one of the things we'll be doing at the beginning of January. You know, earlier I asked you, what is real wealth for you? And I just mentioned that real wealth assessment. So this was a question that we asked a lot of our real wealth members over the years. Um, when Kathy's doing the real wealth show, we've done interviews with couples and individuals asking them, what is real wealth for you? And, you know, most people have a similar answer, but it's always a little bit different. And it's based on different things in our lives. So you just take a, took a look at your life and your satisfaction of it. Another tool you can use that we created about, oh, about a year and a half ago, we created the Real Wealth Assessment. Because again, our purpose at Real Wealth as a company and as a team, um, all the 20 employees at Real Wealth, our focus is on helping people create real wealth. And we were looking at that and we we're like, okay, what's our mission then? If our purpose is that, what's our mission? Where do we wanna be in a few years? What are we working toward? And so we want 500 people to take this real wealth assessment and score at least an 80 or higher. Uh, so some people have taken it and they get different ratings. And our job and our goal is to help people move from a lower rating up to over 80 where they're really experiencing real wealth. So we can actually, you know, um, put a number to it actually. So, so we know that we're on purpose, that we're helping people, we're truly helping our members. So uh, the Real Wealth Assessment is right here. If you go to realwealth.com forward slash assessment, you might want to just write that down. Um, don't go there now because it's going to take you too much time and it's going to pull you away from this webinar. Uh, but definitely later on, go, if you haven't done it already, go to realwealth.com forward slash assessment. It's free. Um, it just, you go through these questions and it's 20 questions asking you everything from financial questions to how you're managing your finance to your portfolio. But it also moves into some of those things from the life wheel, your relationships and having the right people on your team, um, having freedom of time, all these things. And when you get to the end of this, you get a score similar to what's on this little iPhone right here. Um, and you can see right there the, the different ratings. Most people first do it, you know, they're more like a, they're in that 60 to 70 range. And, and then over time, you start to build that. Some people take it and they're up an 80 or higher. Uh, it's funny because the people who've getting, got 80 or higher are, we look at them and they're like, oh, they've been members of Real Wealth for like 10 years. So it's like, oh, wow, we're doing our job. So go ahead and check that out and see what Real Wealth score you get. Okay, um, in the description of this, it said um, there's a four simple four-step process for determining your strengths, abilities, and your next steps. It's really simple. If you've been in business for a while uh, or anything like this, you've probably heard of a SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T. So you're probably remembering what, the, what that stands for. The S is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and thre threats. So that's the SWOT. And so all you do, just like we do this in our business every year, we get our whole team together and we say, okay, what are our greatest strengths here at Real Wealth? What do we do really well? And what can we capitalize on? What can we keep growing? What are our weaknesses? Where do we need to develop? What are our underdeveloped qualities? And you can do this as a person too. So you can say, what are my greatest strengths? Write them down. What are my weaknesses or what are my underdeveloped qualities? And then you can decide, do I wanna work on those or do I want to do the who not how approach and find someone who can help me with this weakness? But at least you get it out of your head and onto paper, you know what those weaknesses and underdeveloped qualities are. And what about your opportunities? Moving forward here, based on your strengths and your weaknesses, what opportunities do you see in your life or your business, if you're a business person or you own your own business, whatever it might be, what are your opportunities? And that could be with your, your portfolio as you grow your portfolio. What opportunities do you see in 2023? I see some good ones coming, so it's pretty awesome. And then what are the threats? What are the things you need to be aware of? And what do you need to watch out for? Looking at those obstacles ahead of time can help you be more prepared for them. So really simple four-step process. Uh, it takes 
probably about an hour and a half for our team to go through this because we really give it thought. Everyone shares what strengths, what weaknesses, opportunities, threats. For you, it might take you, you know, 15, 20 minutes, but it's worth it. You know, if you haven't done it before, give it a try. And then wrapping up the year. So again, I said this is like bookending the year. And so starting off with the year intentions, creating your year, the focus investor, really setting the big goals for the year, uh, getting clear about the, about the vision, where you want to go by the end of the year, in three years, five years, 10 years. Um, but this is all about completing this year, wrapping it up. So what do you need to take care of to feel complete with this year? Think about that. Is there anything that is unfinished? I want you to be able to finish this year and go into the holidays and be like, okay, I feel good. I feel like this year is complete. 2022 is done. I'm ready for 2023. So do you need to do some tax planning? I know you don't have much time left, but get on that. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's like, oh yeah, I got to do that. So maybe some tax planning. You got to, you know, do some smart things, get together with your with your CPA for some good tax planning. Maybe it's making those charitable donations now um, before the end of the year so it's not too late. You can prepay your expenses. You can review your portfolio and really step back and take a look at what worked, what didn't work, how did you do, um, cleaning up any messes. Uh, is there an honest conversation you need to have with someone? Do it before the end of the year. Wrap it up so you can move into 2023 20, like just feeling just complete, <laughs> the best way I can say it. And anything else for you, so think about that. What do you need to really feel complete with this year? So you can move into 2023 just feeling grounded, solid, strong, and ready to rock it. Okay, hopefully you have some things written down, you got some good notes there, nice work. And what would you like to let go of as you move into this year? So those were kind of like things to complete, to do, right? more doing stuff. This is a little bit more of that being piece. So what is it that you really would like to or need to let go of? Is there something that's been in the back of your mind, something you've been holding on to? there has been some frustration. Are you upset with someone? Do you feel hurt? And what do you need to do about that? So what would you like to let go of as you move into 2023? Write that down. And it could be as simple as fear. I mean, it sounds simple, but <laughs> one word. Um, it could be letting go of debt. You could really look at that. I'd like to let go of my debt. It could be, but like I said, usually it's more of a thing. It's like, what's that thing that's like been kind of like kind of like pestering you in the back of your mind. You're like, oh, I just want to let this go. So hopefully you get that written down. Because I love this from Ke Helen Keller, ideas without action are useless. So we're coming up with all these ideas and I want to move from theory into practice, you know, not just having this be a theory, something you talk about and oh yeah, it's great to learn from our mistakes and everything. Got to put it into action. You got to put it into practice, just like creating those habits. So. Moving ahead, uh, I love this from Buddha too. I have to sh just share this. You know, what you are is what you have been, right? Looking back, what you'll be is what you do now. So that completion thing, what you would like to let go of, whatever you need to do, but also maybe have a little bit of a ceremony, if you will. Uh, I do this with with Kathy. We do it with our kids. Uh, it can be really powerful. You can do it on alone. If there's something that's really feeling like you, you want to release it and leave it in 2022 before you move into 2023, you can do several things. You could write it down on a piece of paper, really look at it and say, I'm letting go of this, throw it into a fire. Um, go down to the beach. We've done that here in Malibu. Go down to the beach and write it in the sand and let the waves come in and wash it away. So whatever it is for you, just some type of ritual uh, that's going to help you just let go of that one thing. And and then when you look back at it, if it tries to come up again and rear its ugly head, you can go, oh, no, I already let that go. Remember, I already processed this and let it go. Cool. <laughs> awesome. All right. So 2023, here we go. It's coming. It's coming up quick. <laughs> oh, man. Unbelievable. And like I said before, this is uh, we're celebrating our 20th year of a company as real wealth so we're excited about that it's a big one for us um what do you need to put together for your team 
you know, we have an amazing team at Real Wealth that's really helped us get ahead. Uh, Kathy and I have an amazing team that really help us move ahead with our finances and wealth and our investing. So um, here's an example, who's on your team? Hopefully you have these people all on your team. Uh, having a professional coach, I have a coach, his name is Kenji. I've been with him for years. I think it's 14 years now. I talk to him every other Friday and he just really holds the mirror up for me and draws out the best parts of me, really has me see how can I be a better human? He holds me accountable to doing what I say I'm gonna do, all that stuff. So um, I think having a coach on your team is important. Uh, your investment counselor at, at Real Wealth is a part of your team. Um, our investment counselors are experienced investors. They have at least five years experience in investing, most of them more. They all own multiple investment properties. They know what they're doing. So they're a great resource that you can meet with your investment counselor. Having an awesome bookkeeper is a game changer uh, for your portfolio and keeping sanity and taxes. Uh, having a really good assistant is also vital. Um, Kathy and I both share the same assistant, Tanya. She's incredible. Uh, it's Again, it's a game changer having that assistant to, you know, remember we look back at that SWAT, the weaknesses part, hiring people to do what you're not good at or you hate doing, your assistant can be that person. It's they, they servant leaders are amazing. Uh, having a really good CPA, having an attorney on your team who really understands real estate and real estate law, having great property managers for your investments. So just think about your team and how you might want to build that out in 2023. Um, maybe you have a bunch of these people already, but um, this is, and maybe there's some people you could add to this, you know, if so, let me know if I'm missing something, but these are, these are the big ones that really have built our team. Uh, so I mentioned coaching. Um, we now offer coaching at Real Wealth. For so many years, people would come up to me after I would do this uh, this talk live at our uh, annual events, and we'd do a live event, and I would do the Focus Investors uh, investor uh, talks, and people would come up and say, "Hey, can I hire you to coach me?" And I just I don't coach many clients anymore. I coach three people at a time max. So uh, and I, I'm always bummed. I can I'll refer some people to my coach, but I just haven't been able to do. Uh, refer everyone to a coach. So now we just implemented and teamed up with a company that has trained coaches. I helped train their coaches and it's called Achieve Today. Um, you can sign up for with one of these coaches. So I'll just let you know what it's all about, what you can expect from one-on-one -on -one coaching. I put some things in here. Um, discover proven strategies for investing in real estate successfully. They're all experienced real estate investors. They can help you. They've uh, they've done the coaching for you know many of the big names that you would recognize uh, for their real estate coaching. Uh, you also they do personal development coaching as well, so you can remove the mental and emotional limitations that might be holding you back. Um, it, you'll strengthen your investor psychology and your mindset, part of what we're doing here today. And they'll also they'll help you map out a specific plan to achieve your personal and your financial goals. So I just I love coaching. You know, like I said, I've been doing it for 27 years. I get certified back in 1995. Kathy's also a certified coach. We went through the same coach training organization. I'm very involved in it. So I know the power of it. I believe in it. So if you're interested in that, um, go to realwealth.com forward slash coaching. Pretty simple. Realwealth.com forward slash coaching if you want to learn more about the coaching program that we now are able to offer at Real Wealth. Super stoked on that. Oh, and this one just came up. Stay accountable to your actions, of course. We want someone to hold us accountable, or we don't always want that, but we need it. <laughs> so there you go. Awesome. Uh, I also mentioned bookkeepers and executive assistants. Uh, Kathy and I found Tanya through this company called Belay, and we also hired a bookkeeper for Real Wealth through, um, well, Kelly, our director of finance, hired someone through Belay to help her with the bookkeeping at Real Wealth. And Kathy and I hired uh, Sam, who's our bookkeeper. We've been working with several years. We hired him through Belay. And it's been incredible having someone where I used to be me. I used to crunch all the numbers, do all the books, do the QuickBooks and everything, when I, except when I didn't, right? <laughs> Put it off for a couple months, not reconciling things. And then I get to tax planning time and it's like, oh man. So having Sam has been just amazing. He creates reports for us every month and for all of our different entities and a breakdown of every single investment property that we own uh, shows our cash on cash return, shows our cap rates on those, shows our return on investment, shows our cash flow or lack of cash flow on some. Uh, it's been a game changer. So uh, if you're interested in that, either a bookkeeper or an executive assistant, this company, Belay, is awesome. 
Uh, they've been around for a while. I think as long as Real Wealth has been around. Uh, you would just contact Lucy Faxon over there. Um, that's her email right there, lucy.faxon at belaysolutions.com. They are doing a special for Real Wealth, Real Wealth members. Just let them know that you came from Real Wealth and they give you $700 off that kickoff. And what that kickoff is, is they team you up with someone who interviews you, finds out your working style. Have you worked with an executive assistant or bookkeeper before? Bookkeeper before? How did it work? What, what worked, what didn't work? What are you looking for? What's your portfolio like? Or what's your business like? How would you use an executive assistant? They can help point out things, how you can really do that to help free up your time so you can focus on doing the things that you love and the things that you're really good at. Um, so that whole process, when they analyze you and this person goes out and they look at their um, hundreds of bookkeepers and executive assistants, they match someone up with you that's gonna be the perfect fit. And one interesting fact about Belay is of all the people that apply to work there, they hire less than 1% of the people who apply. So they're pretty picky in the quality of the people. And I think that's why we've been so lucky and, and grateful for who we got there. So anyway, let them know that so you can get seven, $700 off that full analysis in the beginning and then they can go over it over everything else with you. So wrapping things up, you know, I love this from Leonardo is just learning never exhausts the mind. It just, it helps us grow. It might be tiring in the moment, but it, it helps us grow, it helps our brain get better. So we know, and hopefully you know that at realwealth.com, there is an extensive learning center uh, from articles, from the blogs to the webinars. We produced almost, almost a thousand of these hour long webinars over the years. Uh, so it's all there, free for you. We don't charge for our education, never have. So uh, I hope you're making the most of that. Uh, of course, our two podcasts, Kathy's Real Wealth Show and Real Estate News for Investors. If you haven't been listening to those or you're not subscribed, check them out. They're free and they are just power packed with awesome information that's going to help you be a better investor. And Retire Rich, you're probably familiar with that. You may have read it, but Kathy just revised the whole book, it was written in 2014, she just revised it for 2022. So she brought all the numbers up to date. She includes stuff about the pandemic and what happened with all the uh, stimulus money and all that stuff and how that's had an impact on real estate and inflation and all that. And I asked her for this so many times and she finally did it. I'm so proud of her. She recorded the audio book. So if you're an audio book person like I am, I listen to probably 50 to 60, not probably, definitely 50 to 60 books a year. Uh, and uh, so now Retire Rich is, is now on Audible. So if you want to get that, um, it's available on Amazon and Audible. And I'm super excited about this. I mentioned it earlier. My book is finally out. I finally have an actual hardcover. <laughs> it took forever. It took them eight months to print this book because of supply chain issues, but it's out. I'm excited about it. If you haven't ordered it, um, it's a modern parable. So it's a story about creating financial freedom and living your best life. So it's kind of a blend between Rich Dad, Poor Dad and The Alchemist and The Richest Man in Babylon and The Go-Giver. If you funded all those books together, that's kind of the wise investor. And I was blessed to have Robert Kiyosaki actually write the forward for it as well. Um, so I'm a, I'm a rich dad author, the wealth mindset expert. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So if you want more information about that, you can get it on Amazon. It's shipping now. I'm, I'm getting these texts from people saying, hey, got my book. Um, but you just go to Amazon and look up the wise investor. Or um, if you want to learn more about the book, you can go to the wiseinvestorbook.com. All right. And that's on Audible too. I, uh, it was a parable with about 10 different characters, men, women, and children. Uh, so I took some voice acting classes and, uh, and did the Audible. And so far, the reviews are pretty good. So I'm grateful about that. All right, cool. So that is a wrap for the Focus Investor Part 1. I hope to see you guys for Part 2. That's going to be January 5th at noon. Uh, we'll be looking at creating your 2023 and beyond. We're going to look at envisioning your future, setting some big goals for the year, getting some real clarity and giving you some tools that will really help you uh, really grow as a human, as an investor and be that more focused investor. So see you January 5th. Wish you the best. See ya.